So my name, my name is Matthias Betz. I'm working uh, for the IFM Solutions, which is a division at IFM that is uh, responsible for digitalization and software business. Um, and uh, yeah, I also want to introduce Andre Scheiner. He's actually product manager at Software AG. And yeah, he wants to give us a short overview about the new things in the current release, 0.6. Yeah, let's start right away. So Andre, over to you. All right, let's get started. Let me share the screen. Great. Yeah, thanks, Nadine. Thanks, Matthias. Also, welcome from my side. Um, so, yeah, today, as, as Matthias outlined, we want to give you, um, a, a, first of all, an introduction. If you're new to Thinnet.io, we want to provide you a quick overview of what it is, what the project is about, and then talk about the latest release highlights and also where you can find, uh, you know, community content, things like demos, tutorials, and um, how you can join us. So, Let's get started with a quick overview. So for the ones uh, who might be very new to the project and the community, I want to emphasize yeah, the main objectives of ThinHIO. What is ThinHIO about? So uh, if we would summarize it, so with ThinHIO, we want to make device enablement for IoT easy and at the same time without creating any set, uh, ecosystem or platform locking. So what that means is that uh, to achieve this, we are building a modular and lightweight IoT device framework. That's why we called it Thin, as a foundation for your IoT project. So Thin Edge, in the end, is a is a glue, right, between your devices and any IoT platform that you want to use. It can be deployed on resource constrained devices such as PLCs or protocol gateways, and allows you out of the box connectivity to IoT platforms, but most importantly, also the device management functionalities and features that you know, we all need if it comes to IoT and rollouts of devices in general. So things like software management, firmware management, monitoring of devices, and so on. And to achieve our mission, we joined forces with partner companies from the industry and industrial automation area. Um, you see, we, we are here representing uh, Software G IFM, but we also have contributors uh, from the industry like uh, Adamos, Kunbus, um, and um, Nexus Group, for example. And um, just to um, also give you a little bit um, of um, what, what are the advantages or guiding principles for, for the project, um, our focus is really on the aspect of freedom of choice. So when it comes to programming languages, uh, things like message payloads, um, but also the platform that you choose. So what we provide is a uh, not only uh, this type of pre freedom to choose any IoT platform or any component that you want to extend Synedge with, but also uh, out of the box functionalities in the area of device management, as I mentioned, with a plugin mechanism uh, to support, for example, different types of software uh, artifact types, so you can uh, remotely manage the software and, and firmware running on your devices. And the Key focus for us um, is also to be modular and efficient in terms of resource consumption on the device. That means that when it comes to things like CPU and memory footprint, we are trying to be as, as lean and as thin as possible to also support devices that you, for example, could not run containers on. So now let's take a very quick look on where we stand today. So this is um, an overview of the um, uh, architecture of ThinHIO, and let's also focus on the uh, 0.6 highlights. So first of all, let's start with communication or um, um, interfaces. So what we offer with ThinHIO today is we combine it with a generic MQTT interface. That means that you can use MQTT for the uh, connection to your IoT platform, but also you can use MQTT for inter-process communication. And um, we also created a simplified uh, so-called ThinEdge JSON format, so you don't have to worry about different um, payload formats to use. A and with mappers, you can also um, use your preferred formats and translate into different formats. Now, um, when it comes to IoT platform support, 
uh, what we support today is um, um, all Cumulosity IoT-based um, platforms. So we also, you see a list of also partners that, that also leverage Cumulosity here and there. So uh, things like telco platforms, for example, from, from A1, or we also can interact with Siemens MindSphere. Uh, but we also support, uh, and this is uh, an important aspect of the project, uh, other IoT platforms. So Azure IoT, you have uh, support for that, and you have a, a first preview that is coming really soon, uh, will be published also as, a, as an example for AWS IoT. And uh, one important aspect is also security. So one example is that you can use your uh, X509 certificates to interact with those platforms. I mentioned device management already, a very important focus area. So um, here we are really started, we, we have started with a flexible monitoring approach, but also, as I mentioned, offer a plugin mechanism to support and manage different types of software artifact types that might uh, run on devices. So you have uh, typical things like managing Debian packages, if we are really talking mostly about embedded Linux system here, but uh, we also have examples for uh, Docker, or other types of packages that might run on uh, such devices that you can then manage. Uh, for the usability, we focused on a command line interface that allows you to easily install and connect Synage uh, to your IoT platform and for the configuration aspects as well. And now one of the most important uh, areas for us is really the aspect of extensibility. So we have uh, not only strong partners in the project that really contribute own uh, products and services that can interact or integrate with Synage, but we also have uh, community members who are really extending and creating new uh, implementations based on Synage.io as a foundation. So you can find that on GitHub in the examples repository. And just to highlight a couple of interesting projects here, we have things like running all the Synage components in Docker. For example, if you want to try it out quickly and experiment with it without using an actual device, uh, just run it in a container. Or we even have examples where um, community members have created uh, local user interfaces to configure Synage. Um, so if you just want to have a you know, self-service approach doing that, uh, there, is, there are examples as well that you can use and also extend yourself. Um, and yeah, just focusing on the latest release. So um, what we do in the ThinEdge project is really based on the early adopters that we have, but especially the community and the feedback that we get. So one important feedback for us was um, the support of different types of um, uh, telemetry data, but also uh, what we have done lately is we extended the data model to also support um, events, so-called events or alarms for devices that are connected to Synergy itself, so in a, in a gateway uh, scenario. So events um, can be used, for example, to trigger signals when uh, yeah, some events happen, for example, a person entering a room or someone logging into a machine. So that can trigger an event and it's really simple uh, to send this event from Synergy to your IT platform. And an alarm would be quite similar but here we are really focusing on events that require human interaction or a response from an automation system. So for example, a certain threshold is exceeded or uh, an ex unexpected event um, like a sensor failure uh, where someone needs to react. What we also have done is uh, we, uh, or another feedback that we got a lot is the support for different uh, Linux systems or different devices that Synage needs to run on. So we try to be as flexible as possible and to deploy to as many devices and architectures as possible. And for that, we uh, also did some improvements when it comes to init systems. That means that now we support um, uh, yeah, the um, other init systems. Uh, we use systemd as a, as a default, but this can be easily now extended so you can run Synage itself on other devices, on other uh, operating systems, on other embedded Linux systems, uh, and you can configure all of that uh, in a simple configuration file. And last but not least, we also added uh, more support to use Synage.io as a foundation for also device partners, and now in the first place to be certified with uh, Cumulosity IoT. That means that 
you can use ThinHIO as a device partner to, to really integrate your device very quickly and easily uh, into Cumulosity and get certified, which means you fulfill all the uh, functionalities that you need uh, to be a, a, a featured partner. Right, and all of the stuff that I explained, um, you, if you want to have the details and if you want to see how all of this works, there is a demo uh, on YouTube that you can find on our YouTube channel, uh, or you go into our Medium block uh, and there you see all the, for all the releases we have, um, you know, uh, created a block entry and detailed out all the new functionalities and features that you can use. Right, now handing over to Matthias. Yeah, thank you, Andrew, for the for the nice uh, overview. Um, yeah, what what I want to um, um, highlight here today, um, uh, as, as uh, yeah, to close uh, this this first session is the the, uh, the way we work together and we we the way we document our work together and how we collaborate. So of course uh, it's an open source project. Um, so um, most of the content that uh, is created is, um, is, is on GitHub in the um, in the um, ThinEdge um, project, um, so you can start right away from there and go all through the through the different uh, sub projects of, of ThinEdge um, to see what we are doing and then see all the content that we create. Um, there's also the um, the documentation on the ThinEdge uh, .github .io page, uh, so we can all see see yeah, well structured documentation what we currently have and now we can use it. So and, um, on the next slide, I just want to uh, just give you a brief introduction on um, um, yeah, how, how we come from, from idea to product, so to speak. Um, so when, when, it, when, when you have something in mind um, and, 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 and you have a question or also a concrete idea, you can uh, go to the discussions uh, section of the, of the project on GitHub um, and, and start from there. Um, this is one, one important possibility to just um, yeah, get a touch results, uh, articulate something that, that, that's on your mind, um, um, uh, also for, for to change things or to add uh, interesting things. Uh, and we start from there and, and then the core team um, of the maintainers can, can take it from there and, 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 uh, yeah, and, and, and put it on the roadmap, for instance, or uh, get back to you uh, for further discussions. Um, yeah, the, regarding the roadmap on the right side, we have um, an, 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 an own area in the, on the thin edge side on GitHub uh, where we have a kind of a uh, yeah, backlog uh, oriented release by release uh, planning table with all the things we want to achieve in the different releases. Uh, you can get there a pretty good overview of which things are already decided and, and how, how we will proceed from there. So that's uh, also important to mention uh, to, 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 if you have uh, uh, interest in the, in the details regarding the content, just go there and um, yeah, have a look on the roadmap as well. Um, um, if you want to get in touch with the team and you have really just a short conversation, uh, just to chat a bit, or if, if you want to uh, just get more in touch with us in a more informal way, um, you can also um, visit our Discord uh, uh, channel where we uh, have uh, several sub-channels for beginners, for, for, for announcements, for, 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 for everything you can imagine. And it's always uh, a good place to be there to, 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 get, to get an idea how, how we work together, how the whole collaboration goes on. Um, and, and you can also add questions there, you can, can, can put ideas there, and we, we also take care that the things uh, end up at GitHub uh, in the end if it's, if it's interesting and relevant for the, for the whole uh, project. So, um, and uh, yeah, usually we, we really get back to you really fast, uh, so we have a high awareness on that channel as well. Um, so it's just, uh, yeah, click on the links, um, uh, Type, type in the links in your browser, go there, try it out, um, uh, and just get an impression of uh, what we've done so far and how we work. Um, it's really interesting and exciting to be there. Okay, perfect. So, Andrew, again, thanks for the summary, and um, yeah, I'm 